Hi, my name is Brian. Welcome to my channel. You probably made your way here by watching one of my simplex method videos. Otherwise, you're still here to see what I have to say about the simplex method. Now, I get a lot of questions from my students about how do you start a simplex method problem? Do you use a standard max? Do you use the standard min? What do I do with the inequalities? What happens if they're switched? Uh, once I set up the table, what do I do? So I put together a little flow chart for my students to help guide them through the simplex method. Uh, so take a look at it here. All right, let's go ahead and find this flow chart. Let's head up to our browser and we're gonna type in brianveach.com slash finite. Finite is the course I teach where we have the simplex method. Now what you're gonna do is scroll down to chapter four where I have the simplex method flow chart. Again, and also you can take a look at my notes on the simplex method as well here. Uh, after clicking it, it will open up a PDF and this will be our flowchart. Now the idea is that you start in the top left. The first question you ask yourself in these simplex method problems is, is this a maximization problem? You can choose yes or no, which then sends you on the great adventure of what we call the simplex method. Now here's the simplex problem from my YouTube channel. So you can see that uh, I'm going to ask, is this a max problem, in which case it is, so I say yes. Now what kind of inequalities do I have? Well, you'll notice that they all are less than signs, or less than or equal to signs. All right, moving on. Uh, let's, oh, you'll notice that there's a little lightning icon here, so we're going to use that later. Then you're going to add the slack variables, rewrite the objective function, and then set up the table. So here it is in the YouTube channel. Now down here, it goes over how you choose your pivot in the simplex table. So you go through this, and then down here it says after performing the row operations, it'll take you back up to where you'll start a new iteration. And then again, this section here will tell you how to choose your pivot, then what to do with that pivot. Now eventually you'll say no to the negatives in the constant column, and then no to the negatives in the bottom row, in which case it leads to method complete. To identify the solution, you need to go back through the flowchart to identify that icon. For us, it was the lightning, but there's lightning, moon, and then there's the no symbol. Now on the back side, it shows you how to read your answer from the completed table based on your icon. So we have the three cases right here. Uh, just note that in, in the lightning and the moon case, what you'll have is, in this, as, this is just an example, but the Z column is a non-basic column, so it is not a unit column. I've been, I refer to them as junk columns. In any case, those take on the value of zero, which I have down here. But anyhow, print out a copy and see how it works when you're doing your homework. Anyhow, that's a preview of how it looks. Uh, you'll find that PDF in the description below. Uh, I hope it helps. Good luck. Bye.